So a lot of people are saying that I want GPT for a specific use case, like medical or legal. But there are two methods you should consider to achieve the outcome. One method is fine tuning, which means you retrain the large language model with a lot of private data you're holding. And another is knowledge base, which means you're not actually retraining the model. Instead, you're creating an embedding or vector database of all your knowledge and try to find the relevant data to feed into large language model as part of prompt. And these two methods are fit for a different purpose. So what fine tuning is good at is making sure the large language model behave in a certain way. For example, if you want to digitize someone, like get an AI talks like Trump, that's where you will use fine tune because you can feed all those chat history or broadcast interview transcript into large language model so it can have certain type of behavior. But if your use case is that I have a bunch of domain knowledge, like a legal case or financial market stats, fine tuning is actually not going to work because it's not good at providing very accurate data. Data. Instead, you should use embedding to create a knowledge base so that when someone asking which stock has the highest price movement yesterday, it will gather real data and feed it as part of prompt. So those two methods are two different use cases. A lot of time you can just create an embedding. But fine tuning is still super valuable for you to create a large language model that has certain behavior. It's a great way to decrease cost because instead of adding a big chunk of prompt to making sure large language model can behave in a certain way, you can just teach large language model so you cut the cost. So there's still a lot of legit use case where you should fine tune the large language model. And thus, I want to show you a step-by-step -step case study. How can you fine tune a large language model for creating mid-journey problem? And this is a great use case because it is not a task that base model like GPT are good at. What I want is a large language model can take a simple instruct like this and turn it into a mid-journey problem. So let's get started. Firstly, we will need to choose which model to use for fine tuning. Hugging Face has this leaderboard for all the open large language models, and you can take a look to choose the one that suits you most. The one I'm going to use is the Falcon. It is one of the most powerful large language models that has been on number one place on the leaderboard in a very, very short time. And it's also a few ones that are available for the commercial use. So you can actually use this for production level products for your own company. And it's chain not just on English, but a large set of different type of languages like German, Spanish, French, and it has couple of versions, 40B version, which is most powerful, but also a bit slower. Think about more like GPT-4, but it also has 7B version, which is much faster and cheaper to train as well. The next, which is most important step is getting your data sets ready. The quality of your data set decides the quality of your fine tuned model. There are two type of data sets you might use. One is public data sets that you can get from internet. And there are multiple places you can get it, like Kaggle, which is a data set library that has a wide range of data across different topics like sports, health, software. And you can just click on any of them, preview the details of the data, and if it's good, you can download to use. On the other side, Hugging Face also have very big data set library. And to find the ones that you will use for training large language model, you can click on data sets, move down here, try to find the text generation, and you can try to find the relevant data sets that you want. For example, this is one public data set for medical related Q&A data sets. You can preview what data actually inside. But on the other side, I think the most of the use case for fine tuning is actually used your own private data sets that is not available anywhere else. It actually didn't require too big a data sets. You can even start as little as 100 rows of data. So it should be still manageable. So this one tip I want to share is that you can actually use GPT to create a huge amount of training data. For example, I have collected a list of really high quality mid-journey prompts and I want ChatGPT to reverse engineer, generate a simple user instruct that might generate this mid-journey prompt. And what I will do is give ChatGPT a prompt like this. You will help me create training data sets for generating text-to-image prompts. And then I will give it a few examples. Like this is a prompt and this is user input. And in the end, it will start generating a user input that pair with this prompt, which I can use them as a training data for fine-tuning Falcon model. And all we need to do is just repeat this process for hundreds or thousands of rows. But luckily, there are platforms like Ravens AI where you can run the GPT prompt at scale in bulk. For example, I can create an AI chain with this input variable called mid-journey prompt. And then I will copy-paste the prompt that I was using in ChatGPT, but point the last prompt to the variable that we created here. And let's run this. So you can see it is working properly as it generates the user input. And all we need to do next is go to the Use tab. This Run in Bulk option allow me to upload the whole CSV file of the mid-journey prompt. And then it will import the whole CSV file and run the GPT prompt for every single row, hundreds of times, automatically. In the end, I can have the training data like this. So there's a pair of the user input as well as a corresponding mid-journey prompt. 
So now let's fine tune the Falcon model. I'm using Google Collab as a platform to fine tune the model. And I decided to use 7B version, which is much faster. But if you want to use the 40B version, it's basically the same code. You just need to find more powerful computer. Before you run this, making sure you check the runtime type and choose the GPU. And at default, I think you will be on T4 version, which still works. But I have upgraded, so I can choose 800 model, which will be faster. So first, let's install a few libraries. Once it's finished, you will see a little check mark here. Then the next step is we will import all those libraries. Okay, great. And you will run this notebook login, which will ask for your Hugging Face API key. If you don't have Hugging Face account, just create an account and then copy the link here and paste here. We will need to use Hugging Face as a way to upload and share our model. The next thing we will do is we will try to load the Falcon model and tokenize it first. And here the model I choose is 7B Instruct Share It. So Instruct is a fine-tuned 7B model specifically for conversation. So think about it as ChatGPT versus GPT-3. And Share It is just a version of 7D model. And Share and Share It is a version of 7B model that would be faster and easier to run. And it will take a while for you. And it is downloading the whole model, so it will take a while. Okay, so the model is downloaded and then let's load the model. QLORA is a specific type of method called low ranks adapters, which is one way to fine tune the large language model much more efficient and fast. But before we fine tune 7B, let's try this prompt with the base model to see what kind of results we get. So I will create a prompt and then start loading a bunch of configuration for the model and click run. So this is the results we get. It's not even close to generating a good mid journey prompt as they didn't really understand the context. And as I mentioned before, even ChatGPT is not doing a good job for this task. So I'm pretty curious to see the results. And let's first try to prepare the data sets. So what I will do is I will drag and drop the training data sets here. And once it's finished, I should see this file showing up on the left side. You can click on this file button to open this side panel, by the way. And then the first thing is we will load this data set that we store locally and we can have preview of this data. So it has two columns, user and prompt. It has 289 rows. So this is actually another point I want to mention. You actually don't need a huge data set. Even 100 or 200 rows can already generate a really good result for fine tuning. And if we pick up the first row, I can see the data that is properly loaded. And then what we want to do is to map the whole data sets in this format, human and assistant and then tokenize the prompt into our data set. So once it's finished, you can see the data set is fully prepared with input IDs, token type IDs, and attention masks. And firstly, we will need to create the list of training arguments. And you can use this one I have here as default. And then we'll just run trainer.train to start the training process. And this will take a while. For the higher end GPU I choose, it takes me two minutes. I think if you're using T4 version, it will probably take you around 10 minutes. Okay, great. So we just finished fine tuning the model. The next, we will need to save the model that we just trained. You can either save locally by doing model.save pre-trained. And once it is finished, you will see on the left side, there's a folder called train model. And inside, this is model that we just created. But you can also upload this model to Hugging Face. So you will come to Hugging Face, click on this new model under your profile, give a name and choose a license. Then click create model. Once you finish that, you can copy this and then coming back to paste on here. This will upload the model to your Hugging Face repo. Okay, we successfully load the model. And let's run this. Again, I will create the list of configuration for the model. Then I will create this prop, mid journey prompt for a boy running in the snow. And let's run this. Okay, great. So we got this result, as you can see, it produced a really great prompt that I just tell it a boy running in the snow and it is able to generate prompt. A boy running in the snow with backpack, a red scarf by the famous artist, the Simpsons style. The rest is a bit messed up and I think if I provide more data, it probably will produce better results. But it's already much better results than the base model and ChatGPT. So this is how you can fine tune a large language model. I'm really keen to see the results you are getting. Here I'm training the 7B model because 40B takes a lot more computer power. But luckily, TII, which is the maker of Falcon model, they are running a contest where the winner will be awarded with huge amount of training computer power. So I think this is a brilliant opportunity if you really want to get into the fine tune space. And there are a few use cases you can try, either customer support, legal document, medical diagnosis, or financial advisories. I'm very keen to see what kind of models you guys are going to train. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested, I will also produce another video talking about how can you create embedded knowledge base. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.